What's going on everybody? I'm Ben and in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how to use R20's fields to easily recreate this kind of recursively subdivided geometry look. Before we get started, I do just want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, Squarespace. Squarespace is the leading platform for... Okay, um, they're not actually sponsoring the video, but doesn't that seem like that would be a missed opportunity? So if you're not familiar, what these uh, recursive subdivisions are, other than a mouthful, is uh, these grids of tightly packed squares. You can see there's no spaces, no overlap. Um, and these squares are at different levels of subdivision. So here you have an original poly uh, right next to its first round of subdivision, next to some others, and next to this final final depth. I don't know, that's like uh, three three levels of subdivision. And uh, it's a very cool look. Uh, first of all, everything is neatly packed, which I think is cool. And um, it's a lot of fun. So this is the finished product. And here's where we're going to start from. Um, I just want to point out uh, Paul Clements at Paul Clements TV on Twitter is uh, where I was first seeing this effect done, uh, at least what convinced me that it was possible in Cinema 4D. So um, huge shout out to Paul. This stuff is uh, endlessly cool. Um, seriously, whoa. Okay, so um, I think I have a pretty good way of doing this that isn't too painful. This cube here is just an editable uh, version of this cube primitive, um, we could start with any kind of uh, subdivision level that we'd like. I just happen to like the look of the uh, perfect squares, so three by three by three worked worked well for me. Cool. So first thing we're gonna do whoop, is create a three by three cube and we're going to drag some materials on it, unselected and selected. And you can see right now, the selected is overwriting the selected, but it won't once we give it the selection group. Cool. Um, so what we're gonna do is Shift C to set the selection. And we're just doing that, it's empty. Obviously uh, this contains no no selection information. And we're going to name it cell. And then we're going to use fields to drive it. So you can delete this freeze and then just drag in a random field. And you can see right away uh, some of the polygons turn blue. Uh, the whole reason we created the other material is because if you don't, it's hard to sort of diagnose when a change is happening to the selection. So um, yeah, just make sure you do that. Makes life easier. So what this random field is doing is randomly selecting 50% of the polygons in your object, or roughly, as determined by this, this slider here. So you can see as we lower it, it's only going to select about 26%. If we lower it even further, it's less. If we raise it higher, it's selecting most of the polygons. Um, I kind of like a sort of sparse distribution. So I kind of like to lower this a little bit less than 50, but you know, not so much that we're not going to really see an effect or that it'll look too lopsided. Okay, cool. So these polygons are selected and the nice part is that by double clicking the tag, we can very easily access those. So we could subdivide these right away using the uh, subdivide tool. And this is the subdivide modeling tool. You can access it by right clicking and uh, where is it? Right here. Um, the subdivide generator, subdivision service generator, which you might use more often would apply to the whole object, which we don't want. But if we subdivide right away, you'll notice we get all these really nasty uh, n-gons. And that's because, um, let's go back, this, this edge here is actually shared between two polygons. 
So if we subdivide this one, well, that's great. This will be four quads, but the adjacent polygons will also get an additional split edge, and that just runs amok with everything. So to get around this, all we have to do first is um, disconnect. Now, the first time you do this, you'll probably want to hit the gear icon and uncheck preserve groups. But uh, if you disconnect, now these polygons, even though they're adjacent, they are not connected. They have their own edges, their own points. Everything's cool. So we'll just return it there. We'll do our selection again and subdivide just once. You could do twice, although that would start getting very uh, lopsided very quickly, but you know, that's up to you. <clears throat> cool. So we just did our first iteration and um, now you can see this is still the selection. To get a new selection with all of our new polygons, you see now we have some new, some new candidates. Uh, we're just gonna change the random seed on the random field of our selection tag. So I'll click there and look at that. We have brand new polygon selected. We have some small ones. Let's unselect our first group, that's important. Now, um, now we have some big ones, we have some smaller ones. Let's disconnect those, subdivide. Now you see we have two levels of subdivision. We have our originals, our first, and then our second. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You'll wanna um, deselect between iterations, although you're certainly welcome to keep subdividing the same ones and uh, just change the seed. See, I wanna make sure that our final product has a certain amount of the original polygons. So I might just change the seed a couple times until I think a sufficient amount of smaller polygons are selected. I like this. So I'll select those, disconnect, subdivide, change the seed, don't like it, don't like it, perfect. Select, disconnect, subdivide. And uh, you can see it's, um, you know, it's a little tedious, but uh, you could really quickly, you know, just run through this a couple of times and you'd very rapidly have this very com complex looking uh, recursively subdivided grid. Cool, love it. Fun thing to do is create another random selection, just call it something else, but you know, leave the random field, give it a different seed, drop a new material on it, heat it that, Cool, so by changing the tolerance, you know, certain amount of them are selected and others aren't. So at this point, you know, let's just make sure all of our polygons are disconnected from each other. <clears throat> and we'll just bring in a Mo extrude that we set up before. And uh, Mo extrude is a really cool tool. It basically lets you use all the MoGraph effector tools and the falloffs, uh, but to affect um, an extrusion operation on polygons rather than the regular PSR type effects you can do in MoGraph. Um, so right away you get this very, very complex but still highly ordered grid. I just think that's really neat. Thanks for checking this one out guys. Um, I know it was a little rambly but uh, this was a really fun effect to kind of break down for me and uh, figure out how to leverage fields, which I haven't played with uh, nearly enough. Um, let me know if there are any suggestions for future videos and uh, I'll have a look at them. Thanks.